Okay, so this is part two. Um, I wanted to share with you guys the dreams that I had yesterday. And I had these dreams after seeking the Lord really deeply. So I feel like I kind of really connected with his spirit in the night because I was just crying out for him and just to be able to feel his presence and just wipe everything out of my mind except for just us. And the first dream that I had, I was, I don't know exactly where I was at, but I was somewhere outside at night. It was dark out, the sky was like pitch black, and I was with a group of people, there was like 45 to 50 people, and we felt kind of like classmates or something. Um, there was some sort of common union that we had. I'm sure it was just like depicting maybe the body of Christ or something, but uh, we were all very close and we were sitting under this like pavilion or canopy or kind of something like a pop-up tent. If you've ever been to an outdoor wedding or like a family reunion, you know those like makeshift tents where like they have like um the canvas material on top, but like all the sides are open. That's what we were sitting under. And there were tables in there and we were sitting on the tables. And all of a sudden, without warning, I look up straight ahead. And even though the sky is black, dark, I could see the outline of what was going on. And I saw all these different like, uh, missiles and uh, rockets just going shooting off in different directions and then I heard this terrifying like thump noise and it exploded with this bright flash of light for a quick second it was enough that I could see what was going on around it and it was this huge missile it was bigger than all the rest of them and I was Looking up, I saw it go up and then curve and come down, and I could see the trajectory of this missile was headed right for where we were. And I knew it was just going to be seconds until we were all going to die because it was that close. And I heard a voice on like one of those old fashioned radio shows. The announcer was like a a news anchor and he was discussing what was going on that you know these missiles were going off and there was an exceptionally large one that was headed towards these people under this tent this canopy and this he said there's expected to be zero survivors and I thought oh that's great so well I wanted to run and just at least try to make an attempt for survival I wanted to run off to my right but like I said, there was like 40 to 50 people, and so the crowd of people to my right was just too, the crowd was too thick. I, there wasn't enough time to barrel my way through the crowd. So we just decided to just accept it. We knew we were going to die. So uh, we laid back on the table, like with our back on the table, and just, I remember closing my eyes, I like folded my hands over my belly. And I was like, I'm just going to accept that this is how I'm going to die. And I just hoped that it would be quick. So I waited a few minutes. And even though, like I said, when I saw it, the trajectory of it was literally coming right for us. Like, there's just no other direction it could have gone unless something pushed it out of the way. Well, I was listening with my eyes closed. And it hit to the, our left in a field, a nearby field. I can only guess that that was the Lord, and um, I, I, my eyes were still closed, and I was waiting for like shrapnel and just all kind of different debris to come crashing down on top of the canopy, because something or other was going to kill us. I just knew it. I was something was going to kill me, and I just kept waiting, and nothing happened, and I was like, I was shocked. I was like, somehow I survived this. There's absolutely no way. And then I heard a voice in the um, crowd on the tables to my right. They said, 
am I the only one that survived? Is everybody else really dead? And I said, you know, no, I'm here. I'm okay. And I think there was like myself and four or five other people that survived. We were all fine, but everybody else was dead. And what I saw next was, will probably always stick in my mind's eye. It was absolutely, it's very gory. This part's very gory. So if there's anybody in the room that you wouldn't want to hear something like this, just go into another room or stop the video. So I got up from the table and I walked out to the left where the damage was done, where the missile had exploded in that field. And there were just bodies littered everywhere. They were just splattered. And uh, there was like, I don't know, like 40 bodies. And their heads were missing. It was like their heads had like exploded from the pressure or the, the vibration of the explosion or something. I don't know what caused it, but like heads were missing. And I could see the blood still like pumping and squirting out of their jugular vein. And their guts from within were bubbling up through their throat and bubbling over their necks. And it, it looked like it was this nasty yellow hot. It looked like bubbling candle wax or like, like bubbling plastic. It was absolutely vile. And... Uh... I, the people were frozen in the positions that they were in when the explosion happened. So, like, I saw people in the army crawl position on the ground, like, with arms stretched out. But, like I said, like, their heads were missing and their the blood was still pumping through their body. It was just, like, squirting everywhere. And their, their neck line was, like, steaming and smoking because of the heat from this explosion. It was just nasty and I, I remember seeing like people were stuck in the running position like they were it looked like they were full-on running away but when the explosion happened like they that that's just how they were left there and so when I woke up from this dream I think it was important that I saw this gory scene like I did because the first thing that came to my mind was it reminded me of the where in Revelation it talks about how people's tongues will just dissolve in their mouth and their eyes will just shrivel in their sockets. And I know there's a lot of debate about what that specifically is illustrating. And I know a lot of people think it could very well be depicting a nuclear explosion, which does make sense. So I don't know if that's what this dream was pointing to or alluding to, but that was the first thing that came to my mind was because, you know, all the missing limbs and things just dissolving and just all the gore that I was seeing with the blood and just their guts were just like rising up and bubbling out like hot lava. It was awful. <laughs> I think it was the worst thing I've probably ever seen in a dream. But I think it, it could have been referring to that because of the missiles and everything. Um, it could have been a nuclear explosion but I woke up from that dream and I went back to sleep and I had another dream that was very similar to the one that I shared on here last week where I saw the different multiple tornadoes so in this one it was the same idea just different scenery I guess I was at my parents looking out the back door towards like the city area and there were all these probably like again between like five and ten different vortexes like tall skinny pillar like tornadoes but they they were like a in a cluster they were all in a group and it was almost as if it was an entity it felt like it had a persona behind it a spiritual thing it was like I was looking at something that was a spiritual storm or destruction, but just because, you know, we, in our physical, our physical eye can only see so much of the spiritual that it just looked like tornadoes or um, whirlwinds or whatever you'd want to call them. But it was like the force that was behind this cluster of vortexes was so incredibly 
uh, massive that whatever wherever it was headed to was going to be absolutely obliterated. There would be no hope for anything because everything was going to be destroyed. And I felt like the destruction that would come from that would be worse than probably anything we've ever seen. So I don't know what that was trying to say, but it was like that dream I had a couple weeks ago. I just, the multiple skinny, tall, individual tornadoes, but together they were just devastating. Beyond, I can't even think of a word to describe the, the, the force and the strength behind this. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, if I get anything else, I will make a video, but... Um, until then, I do want to end this video with kind of the same message that I was talking about in part one, where just please, guys, just remember to love and respect each other and think about how you're making people feel, even if you truly feel in your heart that what you're doing and saying is, is right, no matter how harsh it is coming across, just think about the manner in which you're doing it. Would Jesus react like that? Would he truly, would he truly reach out and, and and behave the way to these people that you're attacking? Would he really react like that? Or would he, you know, God says to have a meek spirit. God loves a meek, gentle, humble spirit. And he does not applaud us when we, you know, puff up our chest in pride and, you know, hey, look at me, I got this on somebody else, and it's just, let's tear them down, let's cut them off. You know, we need to keep them in our family, in God's family, and, you know, help them. You know, think of some other way, some other more loving, gentle, kind way. Look up the verse, the Bible verse that talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and see if that checks out with the way that we're handling you know, uh, making videos against each other and lashing out against our brothers and sisters. This is not what the world re needs right now. We need to come together and love each other, you know. We're all hurting and we all suffer and go through things daily that we probably don't even talk about. And then we, on top of that, we have to deal with the attacks and people lashing out against us that should be the people that we most should feel like we could confide in and expect love from them and gentle love. You know, there is a time for tough love and to, yes, expose things in certain ways, but it's just, it's not fitting that, uh, that box for what's going on on here for the most part. I don't, a lot of the things that I see, the issues that people bring up against each other, just don't, aren't fitting for the amount of the harshness that's coming across. And it, it's hurtful to people. And I'm, I feel really bad when people come to me on here and they're like, gosh, you know, I'm just so hurt that my brother said this to me or my sister on here, they, you know, they're, they cut me off and they're, turning everybody against me, and, and I don't have a chance to explain myself. It's just hearts have waxed cold, and, you know, I'm not sitting here trying to point fingers at anybody or just, you know, I don't name names on here. You guys know that. I'm just asking you, every ear that's listening right now, if you, you are someone that has been involved in, you know, what's been going on with making videos about each other and exposing things and calling people out for things that we don't agree with and things that we think are, you know, damning to the soul. It's just, there's a loving way to deal with that. And I, I wish we would do that more. I don't like when people come to me and tell me that, you know, I, I, it makes me sad for them. I don't know why the people that are doing this don't seem to be affected in their hearts by it at all. It's like they just come back more vicious every time. And if you say to them, you know, whoa, like maybe you could be a little more gentle about it or more, you know, wise or biblical about it, they retaliate in a way that it's, it, it, it shows what spirit is inside them. And I don't know. I just... 
if somebody would, you know, tell me like, oh, maybe you're a little bit harsh, I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, that's fine. Maybe I'll go to them about it or whatever. But it's just like they, they're never wrong. You're wrong. And, and they, they're too prideful to accept, to look into their heart. It's like they don't want to hear it. But like I said, I include myself in all this as well, and it's not me against everybody else. We are one family with God, and I love my family, and I, I want to help you guys and build you up. I want you to feel encouraged, and, I, you know, I do. Right now, I say if there's anybody on here, if you're struggling with something or you're confused about something or you're hurting or there's something going on in your life, I would like to talk about that with you and help you and encourage you. I just, I'm not, you know, you can tell me anything. Tell me the most horrible thing you did today. Tell me you smoked a pack of cigarettes. You you got drunk last weekend and you feel terrible about it and you think Jesus is never going to accept you again because somebody told you you're going to hell because you're not good enough like them. Talk to me about that. I am not going to sit here and, and make you feel bad for that. And we all have to um, be mature enough in our faith that when we do something like that, we do have to take it to the Lord in seriousness and, and deal with it. And it's always going to be a daily thing. I don't know anybody that's ever fully, you know, accomplished or overcome something that they have struggled with their whole life. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Um, just if somebody is doing something that's wrong like that, encourage them to deal with it correctly. So sorry, you guys, that I've rambled so long on here. It's just I felt it needed to be said, and I probably didn't get my point across correctly. I just hope somehow I've made a little bit of sense. So love each other. Love Jesus. I hope when we all make it up there that we can just put things behind us and just get along.